Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am so excited for these seniors, and I'm very thankful for those of you parents that were able to join us. Um, this is a special day. Senior Day essentially is their spring retreat, but it means a little bit more than that, and I'm hoping that they walk away feeling like it was something special. Um, it's been a tradition for Allison Bell and I were talking probably like 17 years, the last couple, unfortunately, the pandemic, um, as you all know, impacted a variety of activities, Senior Day included. And today, we were very pleased to be able to go back and spend part of our time at the lower school and the rest of it here. Um, they just had lunch, they've been outside, they're a little warm, enjoying the cool temperature in here. <laughs> um, in terms of the program, the, one of the changes, and again, I think this is something positive that came out of the pandemic, we have joined the awards, at least most of the awards portion for the seniors to our time together, and we have had a chapel blessing, and that'll be a part of it as well. Um, but also, one very important part of the day, um, and you're about to hear from these folks, includes recognition of four seniors, well, two in particular. Um, there are senior orators. That tradition actually started 10 years ago um, with class of 2012. So any faculty members in the audience may remember Raleigh Sims doing senior stroll back then. Um, but the way the senior orators are selected is particularly special, if you ask me. Um, the seniors themselves nominate the speakers and the faculty have their say in terms of reviewing and um, when if there is, you know, modification, whatever, it just kind of, it, what's beautiful is the fact that these individuals are being recognized really by the entire community, the upper school community. Um, the four senior, so, excuse me, the four senior orators, I'm gonna actually ask them all to stand. First, um, Karis Assam and Logan Araj, please stand up. <laughs> While you don't hear from them today, they will be speaking for Senior Stroll, thank you. And then the two senior orators for today, y'all go ahead and stand. We've got Dylan Collins and Braxton Lenoy. As I said, it's, um, I don't know, particularly meaningful if you ask me to get the students involved with the selection of these speakers because they, they wanted to hear from their, their classmates. Uh, without further ado, please welcome Dylan to the stage. All right, so uh, first and foremost, I would just like to thank everyone who provided me with the opportunity to come up here and speak. I surely would not consider myself great under pressure or whatsoever comfortable during public speaking, but I'm glad that some of you think otherwise. Speaking on behalf of our class, I'd first like to extend a very wholehearted thank you to all of our teachers. A very special thank you to each and every one of your countless lessons and all that you've provided us with throughout our high school experiences. Each of you has shaped us, changed us, and grew us in obvious and not so obvious ways. I can confidently say that we would not have made it nearly this far without all of you. Before I begin though, I'd just like to apologize on behalf of Braxton and I. We know this is a big speech, that's an honor to be orating, but to be totally transparent, we did not even start writing our speeches until sat, uh, Sunday night and Monday morning. I vividly remember us joking in February, Miss Begon told us we were gonna be giving this speech, that we were not going to write until Tuesday night. So here's being proactive. Thinking back to when I first came to Holy Trinity in the fifth grade, it seemed like we all shared our first just yesterday. The first football game, the first homecoming, the first friend, the first time you cried in front of Miss Fink's math class because you got B minus on your homework assignment, when you played your first game. From our humble origins as underclassmen, we have come such a long way as a class. Just reflecting on our time in junior high feels like an eternity ago, but there are a few highlights I don't plan on glossing over. I mean, back when we were all 12, 13, or 14, our biggest problems were getting the right fidget spinner or missing the day when Mr. Bowden puts kids in trash bags or getting out in Henderson Ball in PE. Now, am I oversimplifying our time in junior high? Absolutely. Because when I get into the nitty gritty details of staying up late to finish an assignment in Mr. Bailey's American History class or not understanding what the heck a nucleotide was, it's not nearly as interesting or sentimental as things like our DC trip. <laughs> Which I'm no longer allowed to further discuss after signing a community standards and acknowledgement form. Those formative junior high years, complete with the good, the bad, and just about everything in between, led us to everything that would be good about starting our first year in high school. 
But moving away from our time in eighth grade, we all suffered from that notorious fall. As the big, bad eighth graders with all the privilege in the world, like a field day, top lockers, and being the oldest, we made the fall to the irrelevant freshmen. But in this fall to the bottom, we inevitably chose our paths that would begin to define us and our experience throughout high school. Our interests, our passions, our friends, our strengths, our desires, our limitations, our collective desire to be half as great as Mr. Cattell. And just as we focus in on these interests in ourselves, I can confidently say we were all thrown for a loop our sophomore year. I mean, if you told me that in my sophomore year, we would have six months off from school, online classes and AP exams, got to stay home, and we're only supposed to go out in open and outdoor spaces, and you told me I didn't enjoy every single second of it, I'd call you a liar. Never before has a high school class ever thought that not going to school isn't really all that great at surface level. And though our junior year return to school wasn't as perfect or as ceremonious as we may have hoped with wearing masks or the constant threat of quarantines or having no homecoming, I can confidently say it made our return to senior year beyond rewarding and exciting. We were forced to stop dead in our tracks and from that we got perspective. Now I don't really mean to dwell on coronavirus because I know that's all we've heard about for the past three years, but our senior year, having a homecoming, experiencing the mighty ambush, getting our sports season back, seeing each other in school every day, having things like a senior day, feels beyond amazing and incredible and we're all beyond thankful. At the bottom line, we as a class have come an incredibly long way and I don't really care if saying that's a cliche because it's true. From proposing a senior skip day basically every other week to every single out of uniform question text, from painting our cars at orientation to homecoming court, from football to volleyball to basketball to lacrosse, we as a senior class are undoubtedly one of the most resilient classes in Holy Trinity's history. It truly does not matter if you've been here since we were walking on the tape divided hallways of the lower school or came just a short seven months ago because we are the Holy Trinity class of 2022 and that bond will be with us for a very long time. As we all gear up towards graduation in the upcoming month, a date that felt eternities away is finally on its way. And now with our years of education, we can enter the highly regarded real world equipped with real knowledge and skills like the vision of complex polynomials, the function of the mitochondria and the Majapahit head empire. <laughs> but seriously, looking onto our graduating class, I see so much success but not because we are all necessarily great right now, but because I know that in the years we have been given here with our families, our teachers, and each other, that we have built incredible pathways that will lead us to where we are supposed to be. The imperfections and the mistakes, along with the strength of our determination, combined with our collective desire to keep moving, is what makes us such an exceptional group. Anyways, if all else fails, I'd like to leave everyone with some words of inspiration from modern poet and street writer of mine, Drake. Oh well, I guess you win some and you lose some. As long as the outcome is income, you know we want it all. Thanks. <laughs>
My intention in speaking with everyone today is to focus on a moment of reflection. We have spent a tremendous amount of time together as a class, both physically and virtually, about 25% virtually on my end. Thank you, 2020. Some of us have been here longer than others, including those who have been a part of Holy Trinity since preschool, which we discovered today. And personally, I've been here since seventh grade, and it's been a wild ride with all of you. And as a point of reference for how long that's been, uh, students may know more than others what I reference here. In 2016, in our seventh grade year, Fortnite wasn't out yet. Kodak Black, Denzel Curry, and 21 Savage all had their double XL freshman freestyle. That same year, Batman vs. Superman came out, a tremendous piece and a film classic. And as of class of students, when we first entered school in the kindergarten, Snapchat didn't exist. Instagram was still a month from being launched. And nobody knew what TikTok was. And no foods weren't made out of, well, not meat. I'm sure many of you can relate to the idea that Holy Trinity feels like home. It's hard to remember spending a time going to any other school, especially our elementary schools. All of you have become so recognizably not only tied to my experience with school, but each other's, that your names and faces often precede the settings for any stories that we may tell. Our high school experience has been one long, incredible collection of stories. When you look past the milestones and the miscellaneous APFRQs, there's hundreds on hundreds of days filled with individual moments of laughter, stress, sadness, joy, moments we've all gotten to share. There's no one I would have rather shared those moments with, even if we weren't perfect, especially in middle school, as Dill Hardy covered for us all. We were together. And there's a lot of times we've all been imperfect, lots of times that we've gotten on each other's nerves, and even maybe times we were flat out annoying, especially to the seniors at the time, with rolly backpacks and such. Like it or not, we grew up with one another, changed as people, and we're all a little different because of it. Each moment we shared good, bad, and ugly was developmental. The biggest waste would be to not appreciate that. And that at the end of the road in high school, we get the privilege to be here together. So while we're appreciating the moment and one another without a time, lot of time left, we're now in an interesting position. It's now time to reflect on our high school experience through the lens of not just what we felt or what we did, but what we learned. What we will miss, what we get to look forward to, all this adds up. It's important to consider not just how we grew, not just for ourselves, but to digest and take those lessons forward with the short, precious time we have remaining at school, to pass these and those lessons on to the underclassmen, much like Jermaine Cole passed his lessons on to renowned scholar Lil Pump. For those of you who are old, you may better remember Carly Simon advising Mick Jagger to be a little less vain in the same context. Either way, you can only hope you do choose to do so in any other form than a sick diss track. Try to think of the simple things, like that it's okay to procrastinate. It helps with creativity or, more to be, or to be more on time to class than we have been the past couple of months, or even to just not split your pants at every school dance through your junior year. We might miss Chick-fil-A day during lunch or the school dances, or getting to see me and my beeping on a daily basis. I know you guys will miss that especially. But I don't want to forget the basic important things either. We are an incredible collection of individuals. As we go forward, we're going to be here and all over the country and possibly the world doing incredible things, making impacts, and creating contributions, contributions to society and overall creating paths much like we reflected on earlier. We've survived pandemics, learned educated and adapted to learning virtually better than any other generation in history, and we deal with threats of world war just to make it through Chaplain Porter's daily dad jokes, and that's more than most can say. All this reflection is well and good, but there's a point to it. We've had a great time here, and there's a lot to think about and unpack. My honest and sincere hope is that as a class, we can do a good job of not just remembering this time and this formative time in our lives, that it's not just about growing up, it's about holding on to the little pieces of everyone we got a chance to spend time with. And if we can manage to do that, we won't just be a better class, we'll never have to truly leave one another. To conclude on more ceremonious note, I have one final, final piece of advice as your senior orator. Always remember, for goodness sake, to salt your pasta when boiling it. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. I'm gonna go off script for just a minute and I know we're not supposed to be prideful but how can I not 
when I stand before this wonderful, as he said, collection of individuals, I'm not their parent, I'm not even their teacher, but I have been so privileged to have a front row seat to watch them thrive and become the wonderful young people that they are. So thank you to our orators and thank you for the senior class. So today we kick off our senior celebrations and we're counting down the days to graduation. I'm sure I could ask any one of you and you could give me the actual count. It will be here before you know it. And I know for many of you, this brings joy over here, but maybe a, a little sadness to our parents and others in the audience. It just depends on your perspective. But it's been a good day so far. We've had a wonderful time at the lower school. It was so precious to see some of our youngest, our three-year-olds, uh, sitting with our seniors and just they were in awe as well as all the other uh, lower school children as our seniors walked by singing to them and giving them high fives. They, I think they just all want to be you one day. So thank you for being the wonderful examples that you are. And we are here today to celebrate your accomplishments. And so some of you will be individually recognized. But please know that all of us have such uh, admiration to each and every one of you and the many accomplishments that you have together. For those of you who are receiving awards today, we do want to congratulate you. It's a special opportunity. You've been selected by the faculty and staff here, administrators, not only for your academic achievements, but for the character and the spirit that you consistently display each and every day. We are so proud of you all, and we wish you success as you leave the halls of Holy Trinity, but not just yet. We have just a little more time to celebrate you and honor you. So let's begin, and I'll ask Mrs. Bust and Mrs. Pettacini to come up here, and we'll start with our actual awards. Good afternoon. I'm Cindy Buse, head of the senior high, and I've got to echo Dr. Cobb's congratulations to all of you sitting right here. We are incredibly proud, and I actually just said to Mrs. Pettacini, you get to this time of the year, and it is hard to get through every day. I know you're, you feel that way, and it's hard to you guys to get here, but then they come to a moment like this, and I'm just... I'm just, this is, this is why I'm in education. This is why I'm here. You guys are amazing. You have come so far, and I cannot wait to hear all the amazing things you accomplished when you leave these walls. So I'm so excited to be a part of this day for you. Okay, we're going to start. We're going to start with our, um, we're going to celebrate our graduates who have done some work towards special diplomas. So that's where we're going to begin. Students here today have pursued three types of special diploma concentrations in addition to our already stringent Holy Trinity graduation requirements. So let me talk a little bit about them for those of you who don't know. The first is the Global Citizenship Diploma. And this concentration focuses on global issues in the context of the humanities. There's an emphasis on world languages along with a travel experience internship although that's been a little hard the last couple of years, I know for our graduates, um, related to global studies, and that includes leadership. The second one is the STEAM Diploma Concentration, and that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, combined with the creative thinking that occurs through the fine arts. And these students have had advanced coursework, co-curricular involvements, and a research experience in, or internship in math, science, or technology. And our third diploma concentration is the AP Capstone Diploma. And that's a college board program that cultivates innovation, collaboration, and logical evidence-based decision making. Students have to take two courses. There's the AP Capstone Seminar course and the AP Capstone Research course. They, uh, the AP Capstone research actually involves extensive inquiry-based research and it culminates in a 5,000 word thesis at the end. So, that's a huge accomplishment for anyone who's gone through that. Um, and in addition, in order to earn the diploma, students also have to complete four additional AP courses and earn passing scores on the May AP exams. 
So we're going to go through, and when I call your name, I would ask that you come forward. We've got a certificate for you, and you're going to get a medal and pin to wear at graduation, but we'll give those a little closer to graduation date so nobody loses them. <laughs> All right. So the following students are Global Citizenship Diploma Concentration Candidates. And as I said, please come forward when I call your name. Lauren Allison, we'll hold our applause till the end. Lauren Allison, Karis Assam, Sydney Brito, Carrington Lawson, and Brianna Ramneth. Will you guys stay up here for a picture? Excellent. Congratulations again. And these students are STEAM Diploma Concentration candidates. Again, we'll hold our applause till the end. Uh, Tim Timothy Adsit, Braxton Lenoir, Julia McNatt, and Sean Sabasi. Oh, and Brianna Ramneth. I apologize. Brianna, you should have just stayed. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, and then for these following students are AP Capstone Diploma candidates, and they're candidates because we have to wait and see what their results are on their AP exams, but I know they will pass with flying colors. We have Lauren Allison, Anissa Dye, Anna Grenovicki, Nicole Grillo, Priya Gutta, Braxton Lenoir, Isabella Muniz, Brianna Ramneth, Sean Subasi, and Josh Williams. Huge academic accomplishments for all three of these. The next part of our ceremony today is presenting the class of 2022 valedictorian and salutatorian with their medals, and they'll wear those medals at graduation. The valedictorian of the graduating class is the student with the highest cumulative weighted GPA as of the completion of the first semester of senior year. And the salutatorian of the graduating class is the student with the second highest cumulative weighted GPA. So please join me in congratulating your valedictorian, Priya Gouda. <laughs> and our salutatorian, Brandon Perez. As they pose for their picture, we get to hear more from them on the day of graduation where they'll both be speaking. All right, congratulations. I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Pettisini. All right, so continuing with our program today, we're now going to have some special awards and recognitions for this impressive group of seniors. We will begin with the Daughters of the American Revolution Award. I would like to introduce Ms. Lisa Walter, Waters, Vice Regent of Abigail Wright, Chamberlain Chapter, to talk about the Good Citizen Award. Good afternoon. Students, congratulations. And faculty, same to you. Parents, congratulations to you. It is an honor to be here with you today. As I mentioned, my name is Lisa Waters, and I'm a member of the Abigail Wright Chamberlain Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. The DAR, founded in 1890, is a nonprofit, non-political, woman's service organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, 
honoring the patriots of the American Revolution, and securing America's future through better education for our youth. I'm here today to honor the DAR Good Citizen Award winner for Holy Trinity Episcopal Academy. The Good Citizen Award was created in 1934 to encourage and reward the qualities of a good citizen, to honor those who possess qualities of dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism. The winner of this year's Good Citizen Award exemplifies all of these qualities. She is a member of several clubs like the National Honor Society and the National English Honor Society. She's obviously a successful academic. She is active in her community, participating in the Girl Up Club, currently knitting baby blankets for babies at Serene Harbor. She volunteers at summer camps for her dance studio and the FIT Art Museum. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating this year's Good Citizen Award winner for Holy Trinity Episcopal Academy for outs her outstanding qualities of dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism. Miss Anna Grinovicki, <laughs> you come forward. Uh -huh. So we previously presented Anna with a scholarship award and in attached here is a pen for you to also wear at graduation and another little note from our chapter. Oh, thank you, so thank you and thank you very much. And can I get a picture? Thank you. So thank you again for allowing me to be here. It was truly my honor. Congratulations again, seniors. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waters. Would Priya Gouda please come forward? Priya is being honored and recognized for the PEO Star Scholarship by the PEO Chapter EM Florida. PEO is an international philanthropic philanthropic organization that provides scholarships, grants, and loans to women looking to pursue higher education. Each year, local chapters are given the opportunity to select one female senior to nominate for a STAR scholarship that recognizes graduating high school senior women who demonstrate outstanding leadership, academic achievement, and excellence, extracurricular activities, and community service. It is an honor to be selected amongst your peers in this year's chapter, EM of Melbourne, Florida, has privileged, was privileged to nominate Priya for the STAR Scholarship. We've had the great pleasure of getting to know Priya for the past fall. This is from the, the committee. And we hope to um, hear what the future holds for you. Congratulations, Priya. We also want to take a minute to congratulate our seniors who earned National Hispanic Recognition Program Scholar from the College Board. The National Hispanic Recognition Award for their exceptional academic performance on the PSAT in the fall of 2020. So when I call your name, will you please come forward? Brian Mazzo, Isabella Muniz, and Alexander Spees. And would Priya Gutta please come back forward for me? Priya has advanced, great news, to finalist standing in the National Merit Scholarship Program for 2022. Priya's standing as a finalist indicates that she scored in the top 1% of the over 1.6 million students who took the PSAT in the fall of 2020 when they were juniors. It feels like so long ago. Um, so in May, 7,500 merit scholarships will be awarded to students from this group of finalists, and we look forward to hearing hopefully great news about Priya at that time. So congratulations. Now we'd like to take a moment to recognize our senior leaders in Tiger Leadership Organization. These students served as mentors and leaders around campus for the past few years. Would the following students please come forward? Will Bell, 
Cole Hewitt, Braxton Lamanaw, George Widmere, Karis Assam, Anna Granovicki, Priya Gouda, Grace Price, Thank you, seniors, for all your dedication and hard work you've put into Tiger leadership. Will, you might as well just stay up here. <laughs> come on, come on down. The Melbourne Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce selects one high school student per month to receive recognition at the Chamber Breakfast Meeting. Will was honored in February as the Chamber's Young Adult of the Month. Congratulations, Will. Our next award is a scholarship award sponsored by Mr. Bino Campanini. The Campanini Scholarship Award was established in 2018 and is awarded to a Holy Trinity senior. Luca and Carlo Campanini attended HTEA from 2010 to 2018. Both were decorated members of the varsity soccer team as well as recipients of the Peace Award. To be eligible for the scholarship, candidates must be a varsity athlete who excels both on and off the field of play. They must exhibit good sportsmanship, display academic excellence, and strong leadership, as well as dedicated service to the school and community. This year's recipient of the Campanini Scholarship is Cole Hewitt. Congratulations. Would Will Nafakos please come forward? The Kelly Automotive Group, Kelly Ford of Infinity, and Infinity of Melbourne in Melbourne and our eight dealership in Pennsylvania are honored to partner with Holy Trinity Episcopal Academy and sponsor the Kelly Automotive Book Award. The book is being donated, the book that's being donated is The Theory of Five. The book shares the secrets of some of the world's happiest, most prosperous people. Chris Sarancino, the author of the book, wrote. My grandmother would always say to me in my youth, tell me who you friends are and I will tell you who you are. None of us live alone. We are a reflection of those around us. Look at your parents, relatives, friends, the people you spend the most time with. In most cases, your grades, relationships, health, happiness, prosperity, and future accomplishments will become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. This is why parents are focused and teachers focus and are concerned with the influences in their child's group of friends. Why many of your parents probably chose Holy Trinity Episcopal Academy. They understand that those around us will have impact, either positive or negative, on your grades, attitude, goals, and future success. The Theory of Five is based on making this philosophy work for us. With that, we'd like to congratulate Will Nafakos with the Kelly Automotive Theory of Five Book Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Would Braxton Lenoir please come forward? Braxton is being honored with the Congressman Bill Posey's Congressional Medal of Merit Award. This award is given by the U.S. Representative Bill Posey to recognize an outstanding senior from each high school in the 15th Congressional District. Nominated by the Holy Trinity Academic Affairs Committee, the student chosen must demonstrate exemplary citizenship academic excellence and leadership amongst his or her peers in the areas of community service, school citizenship, and involvement in extracurricular activities. Braxton will receive a medal from the Representative Posey at a ceremony later this spring. Congratulations, Braxton. Thank you, Mrs. Tadassini. We have a few more recognitions today before we move into the next part of our program, so I'm gonna ask Priya to come down one more time for me. 
Priya has been named Holy Trinity's representative for the Florida Today Top Scholars Recognition Program. Student selection is based upon leadership, scholarship, and service within our school community. Priya will be recognized by the Florida Today in its annual Top Scholar feature. Congratulations to Priya on this wonderful recognition. Our next award is the National Association of Elementary School Principals American Citizenship Award. That's a mouthful. This award is bestowed on students who participate in school and community service, show a positive attitude toward classmates, school and community, display an understanding and appreciation of civic responsibility, possess strength of character, and courage to do what's right, and promote citizenship within our school community. Every year we get to award this award honor, I guess, to two students, one male and one female from each class. Um, and so for our class of 2022, I am honored to award the Principal Citizenship Award to Marcos Correa Lopez and Grace Price. One big award that we don't do here at this award ceremony is our Senior Peace Award. We do that at Baccalaureate, which will be on Friday, May 13th. Make sure I have the date, so stay tuned for those winners. So our final award today is the Catherine A. Ford Scholarship Award. And Mrs. Ford was supposed to be here uh, to give this award, but she called me late last night to tell me that she was unfortunately under the weather. And she is very sad that she can't be here to um, hand out this award today. But she sends her love to everybody. Um, and so I wanted to share that. So I'll read a little bit about the award. The Catherine A. Ford Scholarship Award was established in 2012 to recognize the 25 years of extraordinary service by Kathy Ford, head of school from 1988 until 2013. This award honors a graduating senior who demonstrates strong moral character, academic excellence, leadership skills, and service to the school, church, and community. Um, and this is an awesome award. I was here when um, Mrs. Ford was here, and I think of this award as sort of somebody that walks around and just does everything wonderful and is the Holy Trinity way, just exemplifies the Holy Trinity way. So I'm sorry she couldn't be here, but our winner of the Catherine A. Ford Scholarship Award this year, Dylan Collins. Congratulations to all of our award winners today, but also just to the entire class of 2022. You are all amazing in your own way, and I am honored and humbled to have shared these halls with you for the last four, um, six years, I guess. Um, you've persevered through uncharted waters this year, and I'm proud of each and every one of you. So now I would like to hand it over to Chaplain Porter, who's going to do our cap and gown blessing. So there are new people in here, so you need dad jokes. I've got two for you. I know. You're not done with me yet. First one. What kind of a car does an egg drive? I like that one, but no. A yolks wagon. What do you call a pony with a sore throat? A little horse. Well done. Good job. You're seniors. You're graduating. Okay. So in a minute, y'all are going to come down um, like we do at Eucharist, and I will do a blessing over you. But I want to talk about caps and gowns. Because the caps and gowns that you have and that you're going to be wearing um, for graduation, they go back 900 years. 900 years ago, you would have been wearing them to signify that you were um, in an order like me. Like maybe you were a priest or you were going to go get ordained. But King Henry VIII decided, no, you know what we're going to do? What we're going to do is after I get my divorces, um, is all the students are going to wear their caps and gowns all the time to signify that they're in school and everybody else isn't. So it would have been like Hogwarts, and in fact, there is still one university in England that wears their gowns every day to school to be like Hogwarts, your letters in the mail. But what it means now 
is it means that it's a sign of achievement. You're going to put on that cap and gown for graduation because it means that you have done something that not everybody in the country gets to do. You're going to be able to graduate from a school after having paid a little bit of money and go to more schools to pay more money and then probably with the way things are going, you're going to go to more schools to pay more money. But it's not on mom and dad's dime. Um, but you're going to go and do that. And it's because you've achieved something over the last four years. You've done something significant that not everybody has the opportunity to do. Over the last 900 years, one of the things that they used to say about gowns was that it was town and gown. That if you were a student and you walked into the town and you were wearing your gown, everybody knew that you were a student, because nobody else was dressed like that. So as I was thinking about you all today, getting ready for graduation, I was thinking, are you not set apart already? When you graduate on the 14th, are you not being set apart for some sort of future in the world? Are you not already saying, I have achieved this much, and I want to go on and do even more? All of us are going to stand and watch you and clap for you, and some of them are going to cry because what you've done is amazing, and it's just the beginning. That's why we're doing a blessing today. It actually has nothing to do with the caps and gowns. It has to do with the fact that you are being set apart for something significant in your life. You are being set apart to go and do and achieve and dream, but all that we ask is that you come back from time to time and you let us know how things are going. That you come back to Holy Trinity, that you tell your fellow students, the faculty, the staff, what you've been up to. That you come home and you tell your parents and your siblings what you've been doing. That you remember all of us back here as you go out and do all the big things. So what I want to do is have you guys come forward just the way that we do at Eucharist. So we're going to start with the front row and come out this side meet me in the middle, and then go back up front. I'm just going to pray a quick prayer of blessing over you, and that's it.
So seniors, would you stand? I'm going to have you guys, because I don't know the words, you guys are going to sing the alma mater. So don't look at me. I don't, I don't know the words. So somebody pick a tune and go for it. Dylan. Okay, you guys stay standing. We've got two more things. Um, Karis and Sydney, y'all should probably come forward because I'm not singing the next thing. So y'all should come forward and sing for me. Uh, but may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of him and of his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. So we need to sing the grace and so we need somebody who can sing to come lead. See? I got you. We're doing it together. Okay. You start it. I'll just start. We'll start it together. Okay, fine. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore and evermore and evermore. Amen. Okay, before we do the dismissal, I'm told that this is the only door out. So when you leave, go out that side door. Don't go anywhere else. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.